Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. January 1, 2020, the New Year's edition. First up, from Compliance Week we take a look at the recent CFTC awards of more than $1 million to internal compliance whistleblowers. The Commodity Futures Trading Commission announced a whistleblower award north of $1 million for a tipster who went through his company's internal compliance company uh, or internal compliance program in his company or her company uh, to get information to regulators. The CT. CFTC said the whistleblower award was significant because the tip was first received by regulators and this led to evidence of a violation despite the tip itself not forming the basis of these charges. The CFTC whistleblower program was created under Dodd-Frank and since 2014 the CFTC has awarded approximately $100 million to whistleblowers. So in addition to the SEC, the CFTC has a whistleblower. Next up, the former um, general counsel at Cognizant, uh, Stephen Schwartz, has filed suit against his former employer, Cognizant Technologies, claiming that he is due prepayment for his legal fees in the defense of his criminal action uh, for uh, potential FCPA violations. Um, The firm, uh, Cognizant rather, claims that he has three separate sets of lawyers working for him, and they paid for two, but that he wants a third paid for um, by his former employer. So interesting um, development in the Cognizant Technologies case. It's going to be interesting to see if the general counsel can successfully defend himself uh, in the face of Cognizant Technologies' self-disclosure and basic admission to uh, engaging in bribery and corruption. But remember, Cognizant Technologies got a full declination, even with the chief legal officer and the CEO being allegedly part of the bribery scheme. Next up from Bloomberg, the daughter of the former president of Angola, um, Elizabeth, excuse me, Isabel de Santos, who was the former chairwoman of Sonegal and richest woman in Africa, uh, has had her assets frozen by by an Angolan court. Uh, The asset freeze follows an injunction application by the government, which is seeking to recover about $1 billion in funds, it says, is owed by Isabel Santos and her associates. Um, It is one of the highest profile moves in an anti-corruption drive launched by the current president, who ended De Santos nearly Dos Santos nearly 40-year grip on the uh, country when he came to power in 2017. So uh, once ranked, as I said, as Africa's wealthiest woman, uh, she chaired the state-owned oil company uh, before being sacked. So uh, Angola moves uh, in the direction of anti-corruption with regime change. And finally, uh, from the New York Times, a data breach at Wise Laboratories exposed information of 2.4 million customers. The company said the data breach, which lasted 23 days, was caused by an employee uh, mistake. The breach uh, was made public by the 12 Security blog on uh, December 26. It's a consulting firm that works to secure computing environments. It's not much to its chagrin. Wise was made aware of the uh, data breach when um, a customer posted the blog on the WISE online forum. WISE began to audit its security protocols and found a second breach on December 27th. So uh, once again, another data breach. WISE said uh, it occurred after an employee created a flex- flexible database to more quickly pull user analytics, uh, and this led to the data breach. So as uh, noted in Hill Street Blues, be careful out there. From Tom Fox and the Daily Compliance News, I wish you a very happy and joyous new year. Thanks for listening.